Yan Chi. The darkest nights produce the brightest stars. John Green. The wisps of creamy smoke floated up into the sky. They shifted and morphed creatively in the air, as though indecisive in the face of their own infinite potential. Each wisp functioned differently, and yet no difference of life was found in each. One danced playfully through the air, while the next transitioned smoothly from one form to another. After floating up for a few moments, one wisp would fade, creating a slight haze that lingered in the air, waiting for purpose once more, but finding none. It was this haze that covered the still train yard early in the morning. The natural fog had long since nomadized, retreating further and further into the surrounding city, until the train yard itself was filled only with unnatural haze. The white fog, as the locals called it, was something to be feared without proper understanding, and the parents of the nearby city were sure to inculcate this view into their children. Citizens generally avoided this area unless they were forced to walk around it, and only reckless and wayward teenagers ever stepped foot in the forbidden train yard at night. Stories and rumors pervaded the city as smoothly as the hazy wisps themselves, thus creating an atmosphere of dark mystery and fear about the train yard. The train yard itself had been abandoned for about 16 years. The old boxcars stood stoically amid the foliage and various grasses that reached up from the ground all around them, attempting to swallow these relics of time gone by. And yet, no matter how wild or intense the attempts of the earth were to overtake these boxcars, the greenery never reached further than the entrance of the car, except for a select few vines. These boxcars stood scattered apart from one another, dispersed through the train yard. Some stood on rails, unchanging from all those years ago, while some traveled to the grass, free from the oppression of the rails that had kept them confined for so long. No matter how powerful these train cars and rails once were, the old grass treated them all the same, curling up around them in an attempt of the earth to take back what was once hers. The attempt was futile, however, because the earth was vying to take control of a place which did not belong to her anymore. Tall, scarce, lifeless patches of dead grass dotted the train yard, while rivers of dust and dirt flowed between them all, filling the remaining space. The dusty dirt never respected the earth, and chose to transition from the ground to the air whenever it wished. It mingled with the white fog in the air and danced about with its partner in its new, grotesque form. It mingled with the white fog in the air and danced about with its partner in its new, grotesque freedom. Surrounding the train yard was a rusty, old chain-link fence with holes cut through it, scattered throughout. Occasionally, these holes were utilized by ignorant squirrels, but rarely did a human ever come through. The holes were spaced out unevenly along the fence, but all were at the same height, right next to the ground. No citizen knew what caused the holes, but none of them cared to find out. Only one human had ever used the small holes in the fence to journey into the train yard. It was a young boy that would come by each day. He began visiting this small world right before the train yard stopped being used 16 years ago. This young boy was called Ollie. Ollie's clothes were normal, and not many features stood out about them. He usually wore denim overalls, a red shirt underneath, and yellow sneakers. He didn't do many things that were different from the norm, but after about two years, he never wore a coat. This took place for the few months that he would visit after that, before he stopped coming. The coat idea was quite odd, but he never seemed to mind. Ollie's mind was always somewhere else after he stopped coming to the train yard, as if the discomfort of the present world was insignificant to him. Before he left, however, Ollie would tread the same path each day. Eventually, after another couple of months, he left a trail that would remain stayed even 14 years after. He would duck through the hole in the fence, at that time there was only one hole, trot through the grass, down the slope, and enter into the train yard. Maneuvering through the various boxcars and foliage, 
He would come to the main rail track that ran through the epicenter of the entire train yard. Right in the center, there was a patch of green grass, the only patch of lively, vivacious earth in the entire yard. There lay an old, broken-down coat on that grass, and Ollie would kneel down and grab hold of it, holding on as if it were the only thing tethering him to life. He would remain there for about an hour, seemingly still on the surface, then lay the coat gently on the soft grass and return back the way he came. Some days Ollie was cheerier, but as more time passed by, those days became more and more scarce. Eventually, two years and several months after he had started coming, Ollie disappeared from the train yard. He came one day, then he never returned. In the 14 years following Ollie's absence, the train yard continued to grow in its opposite form of life, with the grasses growing all over the boxcars and the rust collecting on each rail. But the train yard, with a sort of fearful respect, never grew back over Ollie's old path. Ollie never saw the cause of the white fog, but the other human that came to the train yard did. This young man moved into the city about 14 years after the train yard was abandoned. He had come every day for the past two years to visit the train yard. By this time, there were several large gaps in the fence where adults could fit through, so he had no trouble getting in. The young man would walk through the fence and meander peacefully into the train yard. He would walk towards the center to the same spot Ollie used to visit each day. Once there, he would look around curiously, patiently waiting for some sign. Some days he would look for just a minute, while other days he waited for about 15. Then he would perk up and smile. On this day, 16 years after the train yard was abandoned, the young man had only to wait for a minute. Well, hello there, he said kindly, looking over towards an old rusted barrel. The curious, creamy smoke seemed to be coming out from behind it. At first, it wasn't apparent what exactly he was saying hello to. After a moment, however, a small, fuzzy paw glided into position over the barrel. Then a second white paw hooked its way over the edge of the barrel. Finally, the head of a dog lifted itself effortlessly up to peer over the top of the rusted, forgotten barrel. This dog's name was Yan Chi. His strange appearance didn't seem to bother the young man at all. The dog's short white hair was strewn wildly about, as though reaching away from his face. His fuzzy fur grew up around his ears and mouth, managing and humbling them. It was easy to see how the ears needed to be humbled. Whenever Yanchi frolicked about, they tossed themselves playfully, and a little excessively, to and fro. Indignant at this playfulness, Yanchi's fur began to grow around his mouth as well. It must have reasoned that the rest of the face should avoid this sort of foolish pride, and so Yanchi's fuzzy face was completely overtaken by his soft, albeit dirty, white hair. A line that separated Yanchi's black fur from his white fur explored across his face, adventuring freely to create an interesting pattern of fur. Dark, unnatural rings floated about around Yanchi's eyes, casting them in a perpetually drifting shadow. One of the eyes was invisible, covered up by a large X-like scar, while the other, in stark contrast, shone with wonder and joy. Yanchi leaped playfully into the air, seemingly floated for a moment, then softly touched back down with his front paws. Now that the dog was completely visible, it was clear that this was no normal canine. He appeared to not have a back half. His body cut off unevenly halfway along, with his fur stretching out proudly over his back where his body abruptly ended. What came out of Yanchi's body was the creamy white smoke that transitioned into the soft haze of the surrounding train yard. It came out gently and continuously. As Yanchi barked and jumped around excitedly in a circle, the young man looked up at the small orbs of smoke that drifted lazily through the air. It looks like water that astronauts release into zero gravity on their faraway stations. As he gazed at the mesmerizingly fluid smoke, he perked up. There was what appeared to be a reflection in the smoke. He had never noticed this before, and hence he peered into the small sphere of smoke interestedly. What he saw wasn't his own reflection, but rather a young boy's, Ollie's. Within the smoke, the small black and white image appeared hazily. From where the young man was looking, Ollie appeared to be looking down at him, though it was hard to tell due to the spherical nature of the smoke. Ollie was beaming with joy, staring right back through the bubble. After a moment, the smoke drifted on, jarring the young man out of his stupor.
The young man, interested in this strange phenomenon, moved on toward another bubble, while Yanshi looked up and tilted his head, curious as to what the young man was doing. The young man, wanting to get another look at the smoke, bent down to look at the smoke where it poured out from its source. Yanshi hopped up towards him when he bent down, happy for attention. He scratched a very happy Yanshi's ears and looked towards the smoke. He saw more scenes. Ollie running along with a dog that seemed a lot like Yanchi, but it appeared to be whole, and its fur wasn't as overgrown. It also appeared to not have white hair, but it was hard to tell what color it originally was due to the black and white nature of the bubble. He saw images of the train yard while it was still running. The grass hadn't overgrown the boxcars yet, and there was no rust to be seen. The entire place was lively, and most certainly not as dead-looking as it was now. Most of the memories included Ollie in some way. The young man turned back towards Yanchi. He asked softly if he remembered the boy, and repeated his name to see if there was a response from Yanchi. He asked softly if he remembered the boy, and repeated his name to see if there was a response from Yanchi. He didn't seem to understand or recognize the name. After a moment, Yanchi barked again happily and romped over to another spot a few feet away from the young man. He appeared to want to show him something. The young man chuckled and asked what Yanchi wanted to show him. Yanchi excitedly barked again, then romped away through the dust and haze, leaping behind a boxcar. The young man straightened himself up, then walked over to where the dog had gone. When he rounded the corner, Yanchi was unable to be seen through the thick intermingling of dust and smoke. However, the young man was able to follow a trail of smoky bubbles left by the frolicking Yanchi. As he walked along, he looked from side to side. As he walked along, he looked from side to side, observing the scenes playing out from the left behind bubbles. These bubbles bobbed along almost drearily, and they all showed memories of Yanchi with Ollie. These bubbles bobbed along almost drearily, and they all showed memories of Yanchi with Ollie. They were playing in different parts of the train yard back when it was still in operation. There were never any other people in the memories, only Ollie and Yanchi. The young man mused about why the bubbles drifted along so drearily, because all the memories contained within them seemed cheerful. Ollie was always laughing and gleeful as he romped around with Yanchi, who was excited to be with such a kind companion. And yet, when the fluid orb moved along, they shuddered as though weighed down by what was contained within them. The young man moved on, passing through dozens of opaque memories filled with the joy of many an afternoon spent playing long ago. Once he rounded another corner, the young man spotted Yanchi waiting excitedly at a boxcar that waited silently on the rail on which it once roamed. There were several large rocks strewn about near the track, and when Yanchi saw the young man approaching, he hopped from rock to rock onto the top of the boxcar, disappearing behind the roof. The young man, interested at what awaited him up there, climbed up the rocks with relative ease and leaped onto the boxcar. A loud metal thunk resounded through the boxcar below when the young man landed, and he wobbled, trying to make it over to the other side of the boxcar, where Yanchi lay down. The young man sat down next to him, and Yanchi's visible eye gained a substantial peace. He closed his small eye and rested for a few moments, content with the man for a reason that eluded his small brain. When he closed his eye, a large, smoky wisp flowed out from the continuous stream extending from Yanchi. This large wisp of smoke contained another memory, this one much more substantial than the others. It was of the same whole Yanchi and Ollie. It was of the same whole Yanchi and Ollie. They were sitting contently on top of the steady boxcar, joyfully watching the sunset, which burned the sky a bright orange. Ollie was eating a bag of chips, stunningly labeled Chewies. He watched the sunset with Yanchi, who sat patiently with the young boy. His tail flickered from side to side, happily brushing away dust and dirt as it explored its surroundings. The moment seemed to freeze in time as the young man observed it, with Ollie happily eating his chips and Yanchi sitting kindly beside him, both of them engrossed completely in the sunset which consumed the sky. Then the moment resumed when Yanchi sniffed hopefully at the bag and he used his very best puppy dog eyes to try and convince Ollie to give him some of his chips. 
Ali laughed and gently held out a chip for him, which Yanchi took slowly, careful not to bite his hand. Ali laughed some more and then gave him some more chips. Ali laughed some more and then gave him more chips. Yanchi leaped happily around as Ali handed him his snack, and Ali kept laughing. And Ali kept laughing. Then the moment was over, and the young man snapped back into his jarring reality. Yanchi was looking up at him curiously, not understanding what he was doing. The young man shook his head and smiled weakly at Yanchi. That memory seemed to have affected him. He looked down kindly at Yanchi, who rolled over for belly rubs. After the young man sufficiently petted him, Yanchi rolled back over and bounded joyfully and dramatically off of the boxcar, seemingly floating to touch his fuzzy white paws softly to the ground. He waited patiently for the young man to climb back down the rocks, and then scampered away. The young man was able to once again trace his trail through the dusty and smoky train yard by following the orbs of smoke that lingered in the air, unwilling or unable to move on. He walked hurriedly through the dusty and dirty ground, leaving futile footprints that would just be washed over and forgotten due to the wind. He walked between old, rusted boxcars that stood stayed in the dirt, around clumps of decaying dead grass, and over rails that stretched out of the ground, reaching for some sort of purpose long forgotten. The young man, after walking for several minutes, paused to peer at an orb of smoke that had caught his attention. It was another scene of Ali and Yanchi. At first, Ali could not be seen in the memory. It was just Yanchi, who was waiting patiently by a hole in the fence. It appeared to be on a warm afternoon, and Yanchi sat in the not-yet-dead grass by the fence, waiting for something. He waited for a minute, and then he perked up. His tail began to wag, and he leaped from his spot towards the fence. Ali ran into view, climbed quickly under the fence, and hugged Yanchi, who happily licked his face. The young boy laughed and continued to pet Yanchi excitedly, giving him hugs and kisses in return for Yanchi's jumps and kisses. The joy and peace in Yanchi's eyes were unmistakable, and it was returned tenfold by Ollie's. Then the two of them ran off, out of the view of the bubble and towards the train yard. The young man smiled softly to himself. The two of them seemed inseparable. After lingering a few moments longer, the young man continued on his path. He continued to follow the burned memories that floated up lazily to turn into haze. He jogged hesitantly along the path, rounding some rust-covered boxcars that waited for work, treading between scarce patches of dead grasses that followed him as he went, as though hoping for him to bring them life. Once again, the young man reached Yanchi, who waited patiently in a patch of dirt surrounded by stale boxcars. The grasses hid under the boxcars as he approached, afraid of what an intruder would bring. But the boxcars seemed to feel the opposite. They leaned in as he walked into the center, where Yanchi hopped excitedly, wanting a better look. When the young man got close, Yanchi lay down spontaneously, resting happily in the dusty earth. Moved with compassion, the young man sat down softly next to him, and a small cloud of dust accompanied and a small cloud of dust accompanied the slight thump that marked the young man sitting. The dust tickled his nose, but he didn't sneeze. His nose may have been used to dusty areas. Again, out of Yanchi's smoke, a soft, smoky bubble emanated from the dog, this one rich with detail. As Yanchi snuggled up next to the young man to rest, he looked deeply into the bubble. Within the pale boundaries of the memory, Ali and Yanchi were laying down, they were laying in the same spot as Yanchi was laying now, but the grass had not retreated underneath the boxcars yet. They were laying in the same spot as Yanchi and the young man were laying now, but the grass had not retreated underneath the boxcars yet. There was visible life in that memory, which emanated from the young man and the dog in the center. They were looking up and pointing, presumably at the stars. Ali pointed up at the stars for Yanchi to look at, and Yanchi would faithfully try his best to imitate him by pointing up to the stars with his nose. As Yanchi strained adorably, trying his hardest to point his small black nose like his close friend, Ali requested his intention by patting him on the head. Yanchi looked curiously over. Ali gently took his paw in his small hands and helped point it to the stars. The pair worked together to point Yanchi's small fuzzy paw up towards the sky. 
working hard but smiling together all the same. They were so happy together. Woof! Yanchi barked softly at the entranced young man, who snapped back to his current situation. Yanchi was looking back at him again from between two creaky boxcars. The ghostly dog smiled and ducked away through the gap between them. The young man got up and trotted after him. After squeezing through the gap, he found himself following another dusty path, although this one was far more narrow in between the train cars and the patches of grass. He walked on, forced to walk through the smoky bubbles. As he traveled through them, the young man caught only glimpses of what was inside. Their scent also surprised him. They smelled like a lovely mix between smoke and gingerbread. Once the path opened back up again and the young man was climbing the hill, he allowed the brief images he had seen in the smoke to run through his head. Yanchi running with Ollie. Ollie's bright smile. Warm summer nights spent together under the stars. Ollie hugging Yanchi. Ollie leaving reluctantly through the fence. Yanchi sitting at the fence, waiting expectantly. Ollie bringing him treats. The two of them napping peacefully next to a train car. These memories filled the young man's head, so much so that, that he didn't even realize they had reached the edge of the train yard. These memories filled the young man's head, so much so that he didn't even realize they had reached the edge of the train yard. The large, hole-filled chain-link fence stood starkly and forebodingly against the happy memories the young man was just living in. It stood ominously in front of him and Yanji. The young man looked sideways at the dog. Instead of waiting patiently and even excitedly for him, he stood weakly at the fence. His eyes were closed, and he shook his head as though in pain. The young man reached out his hand towards Yanchi, but he jerked his head away and coughed. The young man, alarmed, watched as a large, foggy memory, much larger than any other memory, slowly ballooned out of the back of the dog, who arched his back as it drifted out of him. Who arched back as it drifted out of him. Yanchi looked around, suddenly fearful and confused, and darted back away towards the train yard, leaving copious amounts of smoke in his wake. Deeply perturbed, the young man followed, running through the dense smoke after the ghostly animal. The smoke flew through his hair, between his swinging arms, underneath his legs, swallowing him up like some ghastly creature. It tumultuously sifted and swirled, a skeletal spectacle whose beauty cast down the memories trapped within. The smoke entered the young man's mouth, blew into his nostrils, pervading the inside of his body, disquieting and disclearing his mind. He ran forward through the memories which infused themselves in him, wriggling and fighting their way in. The young man kept running forward, and suddenly he saw the memory, clearly and vividly. He couldn't tell if he was seeing the memory as he ran through the thick, custard-like smoke, or if the memory was in his head. The memory came fully and uncontrollably, a violent storm that could be forecast but never postponed. The segments of the memory came fast. There was Ollie. His parents were talking to him about something. Moving. He was going to have to leave. The tears came quickly. A merciful concern was visible on his parents' faces. They wanted to console him, to help him. Ollie ran. Yanchi was waiting like he always did, oblivious to the great pain that tore at Ollie's heart. Yanchi was happy. He was excited to see his friend again, the same time as every other day. He waited. Ollie couldn't stop thinking of his leaving. He wanted to hold on, to clutch at the places that had meant so much to him. He ran to the only place he would miss, to the only being he would miss. He ran. Yanchi could see Ollie's outline now and hear his footsteps. He couldn't see the tears blowing into the wind, or the cry that escaped his heart but not his mouth. Just like every other day, he waited happily for his companion. Yanchi waited. Ollie reached the fence and ducked through it. Now Yanchi could tell something was wrong. The hurt had reached the fence before Ollie did. Yanchi tried to come up to Ollie to lick his tears away. Yanchi tried to come up to Ollie to lick his tears away 
but Ollie pushed him gently away with a pang in his heart. He wasn't even really aware of Yanchi's presence. Ollie ran in his hurt. He ran down the grassy hill that Yanchi waited on each day. Yanchi followed as quickly as he could, anxious to be with his dear friend. Even though Ollie ran with his eyes closed, with tears squeezing their way out and running down his face, he ran without barrier or obstacle in his path. It only made sense. He had trod this path with Yanchi every day. Yanchi followed behind, running as fast as his short legs could carry him. Ollie dashed through the train yard, running between dormant train cars and over train tracks that had finished carrying their load for the day. He ran through the yard, kicking up dust and dirt uncharacteristically. He was running so hard and his heart ached so much that he had exhausted his ability to dodge obstacles. He didn't see the train track in front of him, and he didn't see the train. For a moment, everything seemed to stand still. Ollie's eyes were open in shock as he realized what had happened. He floated helplessly through the air, having tripped on the large metal beam of the track. His tears slowly drifted off his face into the air. They shone, reflecting the large train headlights that drilled into them from behind. For that brief moment, nothing happened. Ollie was in shock from not having seen the track. He didn't see it coming, but Yanchi did. Ollie landed on the ground with a muffled thump, safe on the other side of the track. The train rocketed by, blowing his coat and whipping the wind around him drastically. The roar of the train assaulted his ears, amplifying the mixture of emotion that grew painfully within his heart. Ollie quickly picked himself up. He called out for Yanchi. There was no answer. He yelled out once more, desperately. He cried out and cried out, running along the track. He already knew what he would find, but wished dreadfully that it wouldn't be so. Ollie's heart dropped as fast as he dropped to his knees to scoop up his friend. A scarlet liquid had already spread over the ground, but the ground refused it. Ollie clutched what remained of Yanchi to his heart, pressing his face into his dear friend's head. Tears rolling down and splashing Yanchi's head. The half of Yanchi that lay in his arms shuddered, and Ollie immediately, without thinking, took off his coat and wrapped it around the dying dog. Yanchi, with his now singular eye, looked up with great difficulty at Ollie. With the last of his strength, Yanchi moved his head up an inch closer to Ollie and stuck out his tongue to weakly lick away Ollie's tears. Then the light left his eye, and Yanchi lay limp in Ollie's arms. A scarlet stain spread deliberately across Ollie's coat and clothes. He knelt there, holding Yanchi, who had been so warm just a few moments ago. Ollie cried. Ollie cried harder than he ever had in his life, each tear a memory which now fell upon the one he would no longer make memories with. Ollie clutched at his friend and gasped for air, crying out Yanchi's name again and again with a presupposed futility. His tears splashed upon Yanchi's face as he held it close to his own. They penetrated the earth beneath that had refused the blood willingly given a few moments before. The tears came and came, and Ollie held Yanchi tighter and tighter. He pressed Yanchi's head close to his own with an intense tenderness. Ollie's tears continued to flow from him, a stream of memories swallowed up by the earth below. He remained there, unaware of the train yard workers that were yelling in the background. He didn't really remember what happened, but then his parents were there to take him away. Gentle hands lifted him up as he fought and strained, his tears flying out over the dog. Ollie's final vision of Yanchi blurred before fading into a black as deep as Yanchi's sleep. Thump. The young man jerked back. He had hit his foot against the aged train track. The smoke was gone, leaving only the usual haze. Across the track and down a couple of yards lay Yanji, in the exact same spot as Ali had held him in the memory. The young man leaped towards him, but then started. Yanji was curled up peacefully. He appeared to have worn himself out with the unknowingly painful memory. The young man walked over and knelt beside him. Yanchi tiredly perked up, happy to see his friend. The young man pet him gently. Then Yanchi got up and the young man was able to see what he was laying on. 
It was a patch of grass. The grass wasn't dead like the other grasses of the train yard. It was vivid, glowing with life in its own way. The grass was a bright, vivacious green, and there were luminous flowers flowing out of it. A small, tattered coat lay on one side of the grass, stained distantly with scarlet. The young man marveled at what Ollie's tears had made. The only burst of life in the desolate train yard was what Yanchi now used as his bed. Yanchi smiled joyfully at his bed, sniffing it contently. Without speaking, the young man swooped down to hold Yanchi, who was slightly confused. He was so grateful for the day they shared. He promised to come back the next day and said quietly, with a voice full of emotion, I missed you.